Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to Rainswept. So, we need to get coffee, right? Or, hang on, we have something to look at or on the table. Why are you staring at the table, detective? Thought you were gonna get us that coffee. I'd really like that coffee. Well, yeah, that's why you're not getting it. Because you're a dipshit sometimes. Alright, let's talk to Mark. Hello, detective. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I'm alright. It's good that you came here. A cup of coffee will fix you up nicely. How many will it be? Three, it would seem. Thanks, Mark. I hope I'm not paying for all that. And stop smoking. Say, do you know anyone called Brad by any chance? See him around Chris and Diane, maybe? Possibly back when they first moved in? Hmm, I don't think so. I don't recall seeing any of them with anyone else, especially anyone from outside Pineview. Alright. Anyway, thanks for the coffee, Mark. Take care, detective. Alright, stop the smoking. It's bad for your health, man. Oh, yeah. oh, can we actually got the coffee now to get it back before it gets cold? Oh, those were the coffees. I thought Mark gave it to me. No, we have to pick them up ourselves. Alright. Yeah. Alright, so what did you want to show us? So their mail just came in, Chris and Diane's, and there's a couple of things here that you might find interesting. Three, there's bills, of course. Nothing suspicious about those. Then we got two tickets, one way to... Madagascar, probably. Madagascar. Ma yeah, it's Madagascar, how'd you know? That's amazing. Um, uh, yes, anyway, two tickets, one way to Madagascar. They were to leave this Sunday, that would be four days from now. You might want to call up the travel agents and ask them about it. Yes, I'll do that. This is very useful. Thanks. Oh, that's not all. Officer Blunt says this one here will make you particularly happy. Chris and Diane received an invitation for a wedding. Someone named Emily is getting married to a guy named Brad. Yep, there's also a phone number there. Do you think we should call him for a talk? That's actually a good idea, yeah. We should. We need to talk to Brad, I think, to get a full picture of... You know, what the hell's been going on in Chris and Diane's life? I've, I've given Brad a call. He says he should be able to make it here tomorrow. Perfect. The autopsy results will also be ready by tomorrow, so it looks like that's it for today. See you tomorrow, officer. Take care, detective. Do we just take a little night stroll around the town? I think we should. Let's see what kind of scary shit will happen. Uh, well, hang on. So we're in... Main Street, we could go to church, we could go to... Well, I don't want to go back to the hotel yet, that's where... <laughs> Abigail's ghost is. <laughs> I don't think we should. We could just stand under a spotlight. Ghosts can't get us under the spotlight, I think. It has to be a rule or something, right? I wish that was a rule. <laughs> Maybe that's the rules of this game, who knows. Okay, now we can go to Overlook Street, but I don't want to go there yet. I'm gonna, actually, we're going to go to church. I mean, it was closed last time, so maybe this time it'll be open. Man, I just love the art style of this game. The way it moves, the way it animates, it, it, it's just pretty cool. It, you know, it just catches your eye. You, you can't help but look at it. You can't not look at it. It's, it's so awesome. Alright, well, again, the whole s church being a sanctuary <laughs> is apparently a myth in this town. <laughs> Alright then. Be like that church. I don't want to. Should I go to Overlook Street? Uh, does Overlook Street has a? Con it does have a connection, but I could also go to the Main Street from. I mean, to the Central Street from Main Street, and then also get to the crime scene. And there is the Cliffview Road, which might have something. Who knows? You know, what? let's explore a little bit, guys. Okay, so I can't go air go anywhere else. It's night time, we gotta go back to the hotel. And I guess we gotta face Abigail's ghost. That's just the way it is. Sorry, man, you have to face your problems. I know, that sucks. Oh well. Uh, Alright, Michael. Oh well. Sucks for you. Anything in the street? Nope. Central Street can't go there either. Oh, well. oh hi. Oh, detective. Maybe you could help me. Ah, good are you at words. Um, actually, perfect, I'm kind of stuck with the lyrics of the song. It goes, with a smile across my face, I sigh, we're only here in the blink of an eye. Clouds float, blend with the sky, drunken dreams. 
Ah. Drunken dreams will help me. Hmm. Oh man, this is kind of cool. I, I I can see maybe like one, two, and four being a perfectly viable option, but it, I guess it would depend on your personality. I, I don't I don't think this would make sense. Drunken dreams. I I don't know. That sounds a little mm, weird. Drunken dreams help me get by. Drunken dreams of you and I. Leave me high and dry. Maybe four. Drunken dreams help me get by. Ah, so true. I can relate. So much. I know I should give up some of my impractical dreams, but it's all that helps me get through the daily slog, you know? This is great. Maybe I'll ask for your help again. Alright, now leave me be. I need to focus. Thanks, by the way. Um, where would you say you were on the 6th of October? What? You're really asking me that. It's kind of what I'm in Pyramid for, you know? I was traveling. I... Oh, wait. I think I have proof right here. See these? My boarding pass from the last flight has a date and my name and everything. Right, I'll be back if I need anything else. Of course, of course. Thanks for the help. And stop smoking. Every time I zone, he f starts smoking again. God damn it, man. I'm trying to save your life here. Don't be like that. <sighs> Whatever. And hey, it's. Uh, what was her name? Mrs. Patterson? Miss Patterson? Hello, Mr. Stone. I hope your stay has been pleasant so far. I mean, as pleasant as it could possibly be, considering the horrible, tragic circumstances. Ugh. I'm having nightmares, actually. Oh no, you poor thing. I'm sorry, sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. You try taking a warm bath before sleeping? I find that really helps me. Or a cup of hot tea. I could set one up if you like. Thank you, Mrs. Patterson. I'll let you know if I do. I don't. If you don't mind me asking, where's your husband at the moment? Oh, my husband is bedridden, unfortunately. He had an accident a year back, and he can't move about by himself. He's still got the spirit, though, and he makes all the decisions regarding the place. All the execution and legwork remains mine, of course. I'm happy to do it. I love this hotel, and I love him. You know, more and more I think she might have something to do with the murder because of the hotel. But yeah. How long have you been in charge of this hotel, Mrs. Patterson? My husband built the hotel when we were in our 20s. We've been here ever since about 30 years now. He's from Pineview. He met me when he was out traveling for work. I fell in love with this place and the way of life here. I haven't regretted moving here even once. Did you know Chris and Diane? We did meet them a couple of times. They seem like lovely people, the two of them. I don't know what the rumors are all about. Chris wanted to star start a hotel here too. Do you know anything about that? Yes, he even met my husband wants to talk about all that. We were happy to help them out. We know how difficult it can be to get started with something like that. You weren't worried about competing them with your hotel? Oh no, it's been many years since our, all our mortgages and debts were paid off. And we've been comfortable since then. We get, a, we get a couple of regular guests every so often and that's enough for us to keep things running. Now the hotel is just a hobby. We don't do it for the money. Hmm. Okay. I'm sorry, Mrs. Patterson, but I must ask you, where were you around midnight on the day of the shootings? Oh, I was here, of course. The hotel can't run without me, you know? Of course, there's dozens of people, staff, guests that could confirm that. Midnight, though, I'd be in bed with my husband. All right, Mrs. Patterson, thank you for your time. No problem, Detective. Happy to be of help. I don't know, man. But Father Smith definitely had something to do with something. I could really use a long warm bath right about now. Well, if you say so. The bath will set me straight, maybe. Try the tea thing as well. My mind keeps wandering back to her. Why? Why can't I... The case. Think about the case. Brad, we'll meet him tomorrow. Wonder if he can tell us. Chris and Brad studied together, I think. Ugh! Is, is there no escape? Well, not when you're psychologically scarred. Nope. That's better. And let's get our uh, sleep work in. Because <laughs> that's the way only, we can only sleep, I guess. He's a detective that doesn't play by the rules, but he has to have pajamas when he goes to sleep. <laughs> Should I go to sleep now?
And dude, hang on. Stop smoking. <laughs> Especially when you're going to sleep, man. That's dangerous. The cigar butt might start a fire and then... Yeah, that'll, that'll be bad. <laughs> that'll be really bad. Oh no. Uh-oh. You're in a nightmare again. No, 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 no. Are you gonna jump? It can't be. Oh. Okay. No, no, no. Wait, are we just repeating this? It can't be. What the hell am I supposed to do? Yeah, we're just repeating. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, no. I am so dreaming. I'm dreaming. It's a dream. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Wake up. What happens if you don't wake up? I wonder. It might be worth a try later on. Ah, uh, not this again. Abigail. I thought I meant more than the world to you. Come with me, I know you should. I, I want to. I keep thinking about it. There's nothing left for you in that world. I'll forgive you if you come. I... Just let go of all this. You'll be so much happier. Well, not really. Because I'll be dead. And this case won't solve itself, you know. I mean, I think... We gotta, we gotta make this happen first before we, you know, die. Can we actually go to church now? Is it open? Ugh, my head. It's so bright here. Officer Blunt will be waiting in the cafe. I should go meet her. Well, we should, oh, we got an achievement. Cool. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can, uh... <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I can go out like that. Casual. John. Classic. Mm, I don't know, man. Should we keep it casual? I kind of like it. Formal. It's too formal. Stress. That looks kind of cool. But, yeah. Actually, there's a little bit more choices. But that's okay. I mean, the fact that we have choices in the first place is actually a luxury enough. <laughs> I kind of like that. Yeah, let's go. I don't think we can do anything else in the room. Good morning, Detective. You got a couple of tasks lined up for today. But I just empower you, so we can have a talk with him. Dr. Martinez has all for me that the autopsy report is ready. Hmm, let's... Uh, discuss the case. What have we got so far? Well, not much more than what we had yesterday. We didn't know that only recently they had planned to go for a vacation together. <laughs> this dude is there again. <laughs> Did something change that? I got. I need more coffee. <laughs> Would you like something? No, I'm good. <laughs> hey! How's it going, crazy man? Good morning. Ah, back again. Any new answers from the tea today? The answer is the same, obviously. No, I'm just admiring the beauty. This is so much more fun when it rains. The smell of rain adds so much to it. Petricor. Uh, what's she call me? Petricor. That's what the smell of rain is called. I actually did not know that. Detective? Oh wow, you've blown my mind. That is so beautiful. Petricor. I need to think over this. I need some time with this. Wow. Well, be seeing you. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be seeing him. Hello, Detective. What do you need? Just a cup of coffee, Mark. Yeah, we gotta start the day with the coffee. There you go. How are you feeling today? Sleep do you any good? A little better, I guess. A lot of people who visit me have said that coming here was one of the most rejuvenating experiences of their lives. The peace, the mountain air, fresh coffee, it's no surprise Pamyu has an effect on people. Well, here's the thing. Thanks, Mark. Well, so far it's been nothing but nightmares. Got the coffee. Okay, let's sit down. Alright, let's check out the autopsy report. Let's meet Dr. Martinez, see what the autopsy report can tell us. Alright, we can head to the hospital. Shall we you now? Yes. Well, cause I mean... Then we can maybe... Have some idea of what actually happened to maybe have some questions for Brad. You know? Urgh, it's really chill today. It gets cold here when it rains. It was raining all night yesterday. Oh, it's Johnny. Whoa! 
Hey, you okay, man? Oh, yeah. Just got spooked. What a jerk. He was clearly driving behind the speed limit. Ah, my photos. Don't worry, I'll get them for you. Here's one. Got that. Why is he taking photos? Do you want to maybe look in the photos? Or... Hang on. Uh, nope. Do we actually have an inventory? Let me see. Uh, open journal, blah blah blah. Pause menu, nope. I don't... Oh, we do have an inventory. Hold on. Or... Apparently we don't. Okay. I, I pressed the arrow key, but it didn't work. It's the arrow key, right? I'm not... Yeah. I do. Oh, that's that's only for Ben interacting with things. Okay. So we can't really open inventory or anything like that. Oh, it's a dog. Hey, buddy. Can I have a photograph? Hmm. I don't want to damage the photo by snatching it. I guess I'll have to make a trade. Hmm, what does a pup like to eat? Just... One, pro probably like anything, just throw something plastic at him and he'll go chase for it. Yeah, seriously, just e even like something out of your pocket, he'll just be curious about it and be like, eh, I want to go get it. Any progress with the case? I can't dis discuss that with you, William. Yeah, of course. Can't help asking. Still, I've always been interested in criminal law. I ended up going to law school, but the idea still fascinates me. It's so much more appealing than what the rest of us scrubs do. Working jobs we don't care for, so just so, so we can pay the bills. I mean, for instance, look at you! You're a detective! That is awesome! So while you go about investigating in an official capacity, I'm gonna keep my ears open as well, right? I'll let you know if I stumble onto something that could help you. Just stay out of trouble. I will, I will. Just eavesdropping. Nothing illegal. Well, if he actually does help me out, uh, that'll be awesome. Hey, Mark. Do you have a bone or something I could give to that pup there? Need a photo from it, eh? Hmm. I just dumped all that in the trash can outside. I'll have to dumpster dive. I'm sorry, detective. I don't have anything else in the cafe right now. Uh, alright. Thanks, Mark. Where is the... dumpster? Oh, there it is. I see it. This better work. Got it. Your pup. Hey, boy, look what I got. Offered one. Not interested, huh? Can't say I believe you. I wouldn't chew on it either. <laughs> Would like something sweet, maybe? Hmm. Would I... Maybe Grandpa? Yo, Gramps. You got, uh... Well, you got a bakery, but... I don't think... I'd like to buy... Oh, donuts. Yeah, that's true. Seriously? Why? Are you surprised? I thought I'd, you'd never eat them. Actually, I need to give it to the dog. You see, the dog's got something I need. You wanna give my donuts to a dog? Come on, Grandpa, I need help. I'll come back and eat your donuts some other time, promise. Uh, okay, hang on. Here's some biscuits instead. I don't think donuts are good for dogs. Awesome, thanks, Gramps. Who? <laughs> Crap, <laughs> please never change. Uh, where's the dog? Is he really gonna, I mean... Biscuits? Do you want do you want the buttery biscuit? You want some of this boy? Ah, you like to say? Right, you focus on the donut. I'll take and I'll take that photo. I thought it was a biscuit. Got it. That's all of them, I think. Wait a minute. What's this? Hello, what's this car doing outside this house? It's Jack, isn't it? That's very, very interesting. I should ask Johnny what he knows about this picture. That's Jack's convertible, isn't it? His Mustang. Hmm. Johnny, did you click this photograph? Yes, I did. Is that... Is that... Is that Jack's car? Yeah, nice car, isn't it? I was just passing by that day and it looked... Did you see anything else? See anything? No, I just took the photo and... Did you see anyone? Jack, Diane, Chris... No, Chris wasn't there that day. His car wasn't, but I think Diane and Jack were in the house, but... Oh. Johnny, can I keep this photo? It'll really help us out. I think so. I got the negatives, so I can just make another copy. Do you think you may have other photos like this that could help us? Um, not really. I don't know which photograph would be helpful to you. Hmm, can I take it? Have a look at the others. I don't have any more here. They're all up in my room at home. Alright, Johnny, can you tell me? 
Have you noticed anything unusual lately? Unusual? Nothing, really. Your face is in town, perhaps. Well, there is that Enaf fellow. He, he is here on a holiday. He stays in the same hotel as you. But I think he came here after that night, so I don't know. Also, that must be the musician. Did you know Chris and Diane at all? Not really. I just knew what everyone else did. They, they would fight a lot. They weren't very friendly with the rest of us. Where were you on the night of the shootings? I was at home with Granny. I think I was at home by 9 or so. You can ask her about it. Alright, thanks for your help, Johnny. Officer, we got work to do. What's up to Alan? You hear that music, dude? I... not really. Ah, oh, well, anyway, he's a great musician. Or was 1969, 1996. A person's lifetime of work, memories, and experiences all reduced to that small hyphen between two numbers. That's messed up, man. <sighs> okay. Thanks for your insight, Alan. Let's go talk to Granny a little bit. I mean, uh... Miss Brown. Detective, you haven't slept in days, have you? I can tell. Is that the case? Oh no, I I'm fine. Whatever's bothering you, you've let it come to the surface. You need to be stronger than that, really. What do you mean? You can't let such things take control of you. You have responsibilities, a job to do, a family to support. People rely on you, so toughen up. Well, yeah. It really is the only way, detective. That's what I found, at least. I'll keep that in mind. Okay, words of wisdom, cool! So I wonder if we can actually go out and see Jack yet. Or is that gonna be something that we can do later? Hang on, we can also... There was something I can interact with in the shop. Can we actually go to the shop? Oh, oh yeah, no time for coffee right now. <laughs> Alright. So let's see if we can go to Jack's. We can't. Aw. Oh well. So we can only go to the hospital right now. But I'm guessing we will have a talk with him soon. Hang on, Aspen Street. Let's go use that. Aspen Street. Yeah, we can... No, we can't actually go to Jack that way. Hey, it's the skater dudes. Chill on. Hey, whoa, we catch that douche death to the shooting yet? No, and I can't discuss the case with you. That's too bad. Yeah, that's too bad. Listen, you teach me investigating, I'll teach you skating and grinding, I'll let you, I'm gonna let you borrow my ride. No. Aw, oh, that's too bad, man. Right, I got the moves that need busting. See you later. Why you wanna be a detective, <laughs> Chad? Why? <laughs> like, you're, you're happy skating, man. Just... Skate. Central streets. I think we can go to the hospital that way, can't we? East Hills. Yeah, we should be able to go to the hospital this way. But for some reason, I can't. Hmm. Wasn't I supposed to get the autopsy report? Hmm. Hey, dude, sup? There's been, there's a, I hear there's been a murder in this town. You're the guy investigating it, right? Yeah. That's cool. I'm a knob, by the way. Oh, who is a knob? When did you reach Pineview, exactly? Monday morning, dude. I saw you, too. I think we checked in the same hotel at the same time. I get here, and first thing I know, there's been a murder. But I like the look of this town. So I think I'll stick around. And honestly, this might sound a little odd, but it's kind of exciting. You know what I mean? Not if it's your job or you knew the victims. <laughs> If it's your job, or if you know the victims, then it isn't. Otherwise, yeah, I guess. Yeah, you got a point. But neither applies to me, so I'm excited to see how this evolves. Why pine me for a holiday? A friend of mine have been here a year back. So pine is the best place to forget your troubles and start over. I don't know about troubles, but he wouldn't shut up about it, so I thought, why not? Gotta say, so far, I'm not disappointed. This place is pretty cool. I've not visited many small towns like this before. Since I moved to this country a couple of years ago, it's just been the university and the places close by. So this is really a cool experience. Are you traveling alone? Yeah, man. Alone's the best. I just graduated as an engineer and I start my new job in a few weeks. I'm not sure how many more trips I'll be able to go on my myself, you know? Alright, talk to you later. See you. Okay, so that's enough. Good to meet you, man. I'm sure he'll have more to do later. Overlook Road. Let's go to Overlook Road. Which I don't really need to. Happy Valley Road. You can go to the um, police station, I guess. 
Okay, yeah, there it is. Press E to continue. Oh, you're having a little moment of reflection, okay. And again he's smoking. I'm trying to get him to quit that habit, man. Detective, Brad's here. Oh, I want to get the autopsy report first. I can't go to the hospital for some fucking reason. Well, whatever. Let's go talk to him. Detective? Michael Stone, and this is Officer Blunt. I... I had no idea about this incident. I came as fast as I could. It's heartbreaking. I understand. Come on. Let's discuss this inside. Through here, Detective. Don't you have an interrog interrogation room here? Not really. We'd ordinarily use a conference room in such a situation, but that's got a water leakage problem these days. All oh, that rain must be, right? Oh, actually, it's the water from the second floor washroom. Sorry about it, Detective, but the storeroom is the best we have for now. That's alright. Anyway, bring Brad in. We got a lot to get to th through. Um, sorry, I'm still in a bit of a shock. I just got the news last night. I, I had no idea. It's a weird time. I'm getting married in a few days, and I was so stressed about that. I sent Chris an invitation, not knowing if he'd respond. I hadn't talked to him in months, and then this. I can't believe it. I'm just shocked. Sorry, I'm repeating myself over and over. That's alright, Brad. How, long, how many years had you known Chris for? Chris? We met you in high school. That's when we decided to major in business, and we were lucky enough to get into the same university. He had a knack for it. He'd been helping his uncle run his restaurant since he was 12. Uncle? Chris lived with his uncle. He took him in after Chris had been shuttled between his parents and foster homes for years. I see. Alright, Brad. I assume you knew Chris well. What was he like? Chris? He... well, he was ambitious as hell. Driven. And optimistic. If he felt inspired by something, he'd do anything to achieve it. How was he with people? Did he get along with everyone? Was he generally an agreeable guy? <laughs> Funny you should ask that. I really didn't understand him sometimes, you know? He'd always keep to himself, didn't want to bother with people. It kind of worried me at times. But I just didn't understand the concept of introversion at the time, I think. I'd do stuff like skip parties just so he wouldn't get lonely on a Saturday night. <laughs> that bugged the hell out of him. Would he get into arguments with people? Short temper or anything? Oh no, not at all. Don't think I'd ever seen him lose his temper, no. He just liked his own company, I think. How well did you know the Anne? I didn't really. I'd only met her a couple of times through Chris after they started dating. Whatever I knew about her, it was mostly from what Chris had told me. She definitely had a power over him, though. He was smitten. I'd never seen him like that. Hmm. Did Chris talk about Diane with you? Did he tell you anything at all? Yeah, he'd shut up things during the first couple of months. After the New Year's Eve party, she didn't get back to him. He'd asked her for her phone number that night, but she didn't give it. She said she'd find out his number and call him, if she wanted to. The wait, the lack of response, contact, or even a single call drove him slightly crazy. By the time she had to call him, it was done. He was completely into her. The uncertainty made him want her bad. Oh well. That's kinda unhealthy though. Hi. Diane. Well, that's how it starts, I guess. You look at what? And <laughs> it's good to see you again. Ah, huh? it's good to see you too, Chris. I didn't think we'd be meeting again, actually. I've been waiting for you to call. Holy cow. Easy with the desperate tone, boy. You've been waiting for. You know what? Forget to ask anything. <laughs> Where are we going? It's a surprise, Chris. It's my turn to show you something cool. I got you something, actually. Oh, really? It's a book. You said you wanted to travel, right? To go somewhere far away? The Dreamer's Guide to the World. This book is written to inspire people like you. That? That's really sweet, Chris. Thanks. Well, this is us. Come on. Wow, that's a tiny bus. <laughs> Look at how tiny it is. Look at it compared to like how tall Chris is. <laughs> oh well. So Right, here we are. I got you something I got something cool to show you, but first we'll need that boat. Oh, um, is that your boat? No. Are we stealing it? 
We're just borrowing it, Chris. Come on, you're not scared, are you? I know you're not. <laughs> no, I'm not scared. Of course you're not. And you shouldn't be. We're only taking an hour for a bit. Plus, if anyone confronts us, I'll talk to them. It'll be no trouble at all. <laughs> Alright. See if you can get the boat started. Well, I mean, it's ethically questionable what you're doing, but oh well. If you're gonna, you know. I think we need to cut the rope first, Chris. Yeah, cut that first. Pull it out. There you go. I can't pull these out. I need some something stronger to help me out. Uh, okay, well. Hey, Diane, <laughs> you wanna help me out, or. Why is there a truck here? <laughs> Why are we driving a truck? <laughs> God. There's fuel container in the back. There's a bunch of tools. Those pair of gardening scissors might come in handy. Oh, let's take the fuel container. Fuel the car's. Oh! Wait. <laughs> okay, yeah. I Why would I, I. Would I seriously. Hang on. Hang on. I want to save first. <laughs> Hang on. I'm gonna save. Right. And let's save this in a slot. Because if. I Can I actually do, do what I think I can do? Fill the fuel. Drive. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Remove the fuel, man. Just. Yeah. And search again. We need, to, we need the gardening tools. Got to cut something. Yeah. I'm gonna cut the rope. And I'm guessing the boat owner will not be too thrilled about that. But, oh well. Dude, cut the thing. Cut the- use the gardening scissors, what are you doing? Oh my god. Cut- yeah, cut the rope, man. There you go. <laughs> Why didn't you do that? Alright, let's fill the fuel. Fill it up. Awesome. Uh, push- oh, well, it's not gonna- yeah, okay, fine. It starts. The boat is tied to the post with a rope. Wait, what? I I already untied it. Push. Oh, the post. Okay. Hang on. These things. Hmm. How the hell? All oh, right, the rope. We can use the rope. Make some sort of attach a rope. Yeah, and then we could hook up, hook it up in the truck, maybe, or... Hmm. Are you gonna pull him out now? I can do- I- th hang on, we gotta remove the fuel, I think. Okay, so... Exit. I think we gotta tie it to the truck. Which, again, I don't think the owner would be... very happy about that. Feel the fuel. Drive. There we go. All right, that's how we. That's why the drive option exists. I was like, "What? You gonna leave Diane there?" That was cool. That was vandalism. <laughs> Still pretty cool. Remove the fuel and back up. All right. Put the fuel in. Awesome. Sit inside. <laughs> no, we gotta push first. Let's go. This is beautiful. Isn't it? I maybe you like it. I used to come here all the time a few years back. Just to get away from everything. That was my secret. This was my secret world, away from everything. Why did you stop coming? <sighs> I don't know. I guess it wasn't enough anymore. Am I dreaming? Is this really happening? Oh, just look at her, is she even real? Alright Chris, play cool, play cool, stop being weird. Can I get dialogue options? Because I'll make you not weird, don't, don't worry, I promise I'll pick the right ones. Oh, is that... Where are we? Is that like an island? This is incredible! Come on, I'll shoot, I'll shoot my favorite spot. No, oh, they're walking, okay. I thought it was automatic, my bad. Run, Chris! <laughs> Run! Use those legs. I think the favorite spot is like right there. Because it has a rock on it. <laughs> it's the only rock on this island. 
So I assume that's the favorite. Oh, <laughs> it's been years since I was here last. Come on, Diane, sit down. I'm I'm ready for the picnic. Oh, you're gonna sit on a rock. Okay. I've come here and sit here for hours whenever I was feeling overwhelmed. Alone? Yeah, that's the best way, isn't it? Yeah, I love doing things alone. I like that you think that way too. I don't know though. Sometimes I can't really enjoy being alone. Because the voice in my head starts worrying me that I might be unwanted. And what good is happiness by yourself if the world world doesn't need or care about you? If people don't need you, is your happiness alone even valid? Of course it is! So I end up comparing myself to the cool kids like I'm lesser. That messes with me, so I can't really have a good time by myself. Who wants to fit in anyway? Mostly, I don't care. I just enjoy working and spending time on hobbies. But it's like, what's the point of all the cool things you do or experience it alone if nobody cares? And then, maybe doing great work could help you be a part of the picture. Maybe fame and recognition could help you claim a place in the world. <laughs> As a great worker her fame can make up for personal shortcomings. I never felt that way. Who cares what people think? I like being myself by myself because that means I don't have to deal with them. People can be horrible. Some of them. I'm just not interested in being a part of their shitty picture. Screw being admired or accepted, I think. Looking for that is a waste of time. But also, everyone feels that way, Chris. At least some of the time. Oops, I don't tell that. My bad. Everyone fears thought of not fitting in. It's not just you. Don't worry. Really? It doesn't feel like it somehow. <laughs> Man, this is getting really philosophical. I like it. Even, peop even people with fame, despite what you think, most just don't show it. You're fine as you are. Everyone is. Don't be so hard on yourself. Especially you. You're intelligent, ambitious, good-looking, funny, and... <laughs> she called me good-looking! <laughs> so, don't worry. Wait, why am I talking to all about all this? All about all this and embarrassing myself? Ugh, idiot. What's wrong with me? I should ask her something about herself. Forget all that. It just bothers me sometimes. It's not a big deal. Tell me about you. Tell you what about me? Tell me about your friends. Ah, uh, friends. Yes? I don't know how I feel about them. Actually, I'm not in the, in the mood to talk about them. Tell me about yours. Um, I have some good friends. Brad's one. And Emily. You know them. There are a couple of other guys I meet sometimes. Mostly it's just me and Brad. We're pretty close. Good for you. He's a great guy. Tell me about your family and childhood. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? You chose a topic I care to talk the least about. Try again. Dating anyone right now? Say no, please say no. No, it's been almost a year now. Yes! There were some guys, some were great, some weren't. And? I'm not in the mood to elaborate. Alright, you? Same, been about a year. I've only been in a couple of relationships. They were fine, nothing worth talking about. I'm not in the mood to elaborate. Hey! I wasn't the one that brought it up. Alright, alright. I should talk to her about something else, something she likes. What do you want in life? Jeez, I don't know what I want in life. I thought about it, but I just don't know. I can't look past my everyday life for the most part. You know, for the whole me trying to get as far away from home as possible, but it's all I can see as of now. That's all I want in order to feel normal. I don't know about happy. Maybe once I move, I can think about the things that would make me happy. Tell me what inspires you. Inspires me? Nothing, really. Not everyone feels inspired the way you do, do you, you know? Is there nothing that even, say, excites you? Mm, no, not really. When I was a kid, maybe. Damn. I do like how you ask me these questions, though. And I like listening to you talk about these things. I don't know what keeps you inspired, but it makes me happy. So what about you? What keeps you inspired? Man, well, settle down then. This might take a while. I never tried describing it to anyone before. It's just... An amazing feeling, random things trigger it, mostly nature or music or a film. For a second those things give me a tiny glimpse of something really, really beautiful. Ugh, I know, I probably sound crazy, but it's like a vision. It's like a portal to another world, like the life I lived once, maybe in another dimension. 
It's like falling in love in a way, you know? It just feels different, magical, nostalgic almost. Or like a dream, you know? How dreams feel beautiful? I just feel that most of the time. I don't know. All I know, it's beauty overwhelms me. It's just so damn beautiful, Diane. And that's what keeps me inspired. Damn. Did I really just tell her all that? Chris. Wow. You have a connection with the dream world, and there are... There you are, feeling insecure about stupidest, most relevant things. Like, honestly, who cares about things like being popular when you got that? Hey, grass is always greener and all that, right? Well then, it's a pity that we value the things we don't have. Seriously, you should really be an artist or something. I don't know what you're up, against, what, what you're up to starting a business. Maybe, but I'm good at this business stuff. And hey, it pays the bills. You know, talking about all this, it's actually kind of exciting. Maybe you could inspire me. I'd love to. Nobody real nobody's really interested in this stuff usually. I'm very interested. Oh hey look, it's dark now. The stars have come out. Whoa! <laughs> Diane, you're incredible for getting me here. Look at the stars, look at them! Look at the water, Chris. What? Whoa, the water's glowing! Why is water glowing? Try walking in it. Whoa. Okay, be <laughs> let's be <laughs> let's do it. Holy shit! It's, it's following me! The glowing stuff is following me! This is magic! <laughs> Isn't it? Wow, that is it. This is the best thing ever! Alright, come back. I think we should be heading back now. Really? Now you're worried about going back? It's getting dark. I don't want you to drown or something. Not before I get to know you better, at least. <laughs> come here. <laughs> Alright. Let's get out of the glowing stuff. No, wait. You know what? I'll regret it if I don't do this now. Hmm? Do what, Chris? I... I think I want to swim in this water! Oh, that... Wait, what?! This is gonna be so freaking cool! <laughs> oh, look at him! He's gonna go for it! <laughs> oh, this is amazing! This is... This is Diane? He's glowing, man. That is pr that is pretty fucking cool, I gotta say. He's like dazed. I can't believe it. He's become like Jesus. <laughs> Something I don't know. <laughs> After that, Tayan disappeared from his life once again. Chris didn't hear from her for weeks. So obviously Chris couldn't believe it when she asked him to come over to her place all of a sudden. That was the thing with Diane, really. And it's that unpredictability that drew Chris in, I think. Hey, Chris. Diane? Finally, I was beginning to wonder if you were going to call again. Oh, of course I was. Why don't you just give me your number? That's This is so inconvenient. I always have to wait. I enjoy it. <laughs> anyway, there is no one at my place. I just ordered pizza. Too much of it. You want to come over and help? Uh, yeah, sure. Really? Yeah. I don't know why I'm taking a risk, but just come before I change my mind. Risk? Um, so where's your place? How do I get there? Wow, I can't believe I'm actually here. Shut up. I never meet anyone at home. I don't know why I called you. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm sure your parents would like me. Yeah, sure. I love this. What, making coffee? Yes, yeah, moments like this, like these, it's raining outside, we're just chilling, making coffee in this warm kitchen. Plus, we got pizza on the way. <laughs> well, yeah, it's good. So, stuff that's kind of normal. <laughs> Doesn't make it any less beautiful. Do you always make, ob make observations like these? I... Not always. Only around you, I think. Is it annoying? No, not at all. I like it. It's just kind of new, to me, new for me. When do you have your exams? Exams? The ones you've been preparing for, so you can study abroad? Oh, right. That. There's a few more months to go. I'm not sure if I really want to take them, though. Why not? I'm only taking those so I can get far away from this place. But I don't know. Maybe there's a better way. Did you read the travel book I gave you? I don't really get the time to. I did flip through it, though. It looks really interesting. I'm just waiting for the right moment so that I can enjoy it. You should read it. It's great. Then you could really make a plan to work out. And work out how to execute it. Yeah, I will. I'll be moving to Pine soon. I've been looking around and I found a couple of good places I could move into. 
The hotel I'm planning to start there? That, that should also work out. I met the planning committee and checked out a few possible sites too. That's great. When do you think you'll move? Next month, hopefully. I really admire you, you know? What? You go out, you do the things you want, you don't just let dreams remain dreams. I admire that. Thanks. Where's the bloody pizza? <laughs> I can't wait anymore. <laughs> and yeah, just like that, the pizza's here. Wow. I don't normally get to just lounge around and eat pizza for hours. I can get used to this. Why don't you, though? So, you know, just stuff. Anyway, thank you for coming, I mean. I'm glad you did. Aw. That's their first kiss. Is it bad? Have I done something wrong? Diane? This is getting a bit close for me. You shouldn't... I don't understand. The more you get to know people, the less you can stand them. You said that. That was different. That was before I met you. You don't know me, Chris. When you do, you won't like who you'll find. Hmm. Tell me what's on your mind. No, I don't want to. I think... I think you should leave. Diane, come on. Please, Chris. My parents are probably on their way home anyway. Maybe I next see you. I... I don't know. I'll call you. Okay. Okay. Aw, oh, man. After that, Chris and Diane began to meet a bit more frequently. At the same time, I started seeing him a lot less as well. When did you see him next? Um, Detective, I need to be somewhere else in a bit. Is it okay if we pick this up again tomorrow? Uh, of course. Thanks for your time, Brad. Yeah, no problem. And I do want to get the fucking autopsy report. I don't know how I'll be, I'll be able to. Where the hell am I? Is it the... Check the autopsy report. Yeah, I want to go do that, but I, for some reason I can't fucking get to here from the Central Street to East Hills Road for some reason. And that's the only place I can get to. So I don't know what I can do. I want to go visit Jag as well. If I can. Aspen Streets. There is another... Okay, no point going there now. Okay, how do we get to the hospital? Okay, now I can get... I, I couldn't do this before. I don't know why. Oh well. Let's go and get the autopsy report. Pioneer Medical Center. How old is this building? Old, very old. But Dr. Martinez makes up for it. He's great. He's in charge of the autopsy. You should be inside. Let's go. Whoa. Look at all the broken windows. Should we go in? Hang on, stay outside for a little bit. <laughs> okay, well, I guess I, c I can't really look at anything. I wanted to look at the broken windows and... I don't know. Maybe make a comment about them, but oh well, let's go in. Yes. That must be Dr. Martinez, hi. Hello, Detective Stone, Officer Blunt. Hello, Doctor, how are you? Oh, just the usual, you know. The sad, sad case living in Pineview. I don't do these often, thankfully. Uh, anyway, should we begin with the report? Who would you like to hear about first, Detective? Let's see Chris first. Alright, give me a minute, please. And one more thing. What? I can't let you do this alone, Detective. You need my expertise. Well, actually... Doctor, shall we begin? Of course. The victim is Christopher Green, age 26. Here we can clearly see a hard contact wound on the head caused by firing a handgun. As you can see, there's a small stellate-shaped hole on the right side of the head of the temple. The skin around this is black and seared residue from the gun and an abrasion from the overstretching of the skin. This is the entry wound. On his left, we can see a bigger irregular wound and secondary fractures of the skull. This is the exit wound. A large part of his ear of the ear is also missing. 
Examination of the victim's right hand shows clear traces of gunshot residue. I knew it. Curtis's toxicology report shows alcohol content in the system. He did have that glass of wine on the table. The amount indicates much, much more, much more than just a class officer. We didn't find any evidence of that in the house, did we, officer? No. Uh, no, n no, we didn't, actually. We didn't. Just one bottle in that one glass. Maybe they'd gone out that, that night and had drinks somewhere else as well? Good point. Where could I have gone? We should look into that. Allen's, probably. What do you think, Dr. Martinez? The trauma to the brain caused by the bullets and the subsequent blood loss were the cause of death. The gunshot residue strongly suggests that Chris was the one to fire the gun. There's no evidence of another person physically forcing him to do this either. No physical marks on Chris to suggest any sort of struggle. He shot himself, it's definitely suicide. I knew it! Of course! Ha! Let's take a look at Diane now, Doctor. Of course. And one more thing. The lights. Is that what you keep, what you keep forgetting, Dr. Martinez? The victim is Diane Miller, age 24. Large amount of soot, soiling, and burnt hairs around the wound indicate the shot was taken at close range. Say, maybe a distance of less than 10 centimeters. The victim was shot in the upper abdomen, the bullet traveled through and hit the lower ribs and made it its exit through the back. Shockwave from the round managed to rupture the heart without directly penetrating it. This caused a hemorrhage of an instant loss of consciousness and immediate death. Jeez. There isn't any sign of struggle on the arms or anything to suggest that Diane may have fired the gun. It's hard to say whether she ha held the gun at all, but the fingerprints report would probably reveal that. But it's worth noting that there are old scars on Diane's forearm, say, some more than a few years old. Oh, I think she was cutting herself then. It's possible that she or someone else had harmed her more than a couple of times, possibly using a blade. Is there anything you, you can tell us about that in more details? It's hard to say anything more about this detective. The scars are very old. The toxicology report shows that Diane was under the influence of alcohol during the shooting. Probably from where they'd gone out earlier that night. If they did, yes. Well, what do you think, Dr. Martinez? Well, there's not much to conclude from this other than what I've already discussed. Someone shot Diane from close range, the wound matches the rounds, and the gun found at the crime scene. There are signs showing the physical trauma from her past, but nothing to suggest there was any physical abuse on that day or in recent months. Honestly, it could have been Chris it could have been Chris that shot Diane, or it could have been someone else too. It's hard to say from these results. Eh, it's pretty simple. They probably just had another on one of their arguments on their night out, and the alcohol must have not helped either. Chris was probably too drunk, he did pour himself a glass at home. There were two glasses, doesn't that re doesn't really fit your narrative, does it? Well, whatever, maybe he was trying to make it up to her. Anyway, he poured himself a drink and they continued arguing. She went up upstairs to change. In a fit of drunkenness and rage, he grabbed his gun maybe just to scare her. But when she came downstairs, he had enough. Maybe he could, before, before she could say anything, he shot her. He then realized what she had done in his drunk state and shot himself, that's it. Ryan, please. This guy is a bit dumb. I just want to like slap him a little bit and hope the stupidity just, you know, flows out of his brain. Doctor, if that's the case, wouldn't there be Diane's blood on Chris from back spatter? Not necessarily. Back spatter depends on a few different conditions. The velocity of the rounds and the region of the wound are two of them. As expected. Anyway, I should get going. Got some important work to finish. Yeah, this isn't important at all, huh? <sighs> We should be heading back to the detective. Go on ahead, I'll catch up. I want to talk to Martina, Dr. Martinez about something. Oh, alright then, I'll see you soon. Yes, detective, what is it? Uh, well, I've been recently having bad dreams and when I wake up, I can't move my body for a few seconds. It's like I'm awake, I'm sure I am, but I can't do anything, I can't move or speak. I also th see things, terrifying things. I haven't slept properly in days because of this. Well, Detective, what you're suffering from is called sleep paralysis. It's completely harmless. Seriously? As the name suggests, your body is paralyzed and asleep, and even when your mind is awake. Often people witness visual and oral hallucinations as well. 
There is nothing to worry about in regards to the paralysis itself, apart from it being a completely terrifying experience. Gee, thanks. It might be a symptom of another issue, though. When did this start? On my first night here in Pineview. Is there anything stressing you out? This case, maybe? It's nothing worse than what I'd seen before. I don't think it's stress exactly. It might not be the case, then. Try to identify what it could be and try dealing with it. I could prescribe you some sleep medication medicines, but I wouldn't really want you to become dependent on them. It'd be better for you to just try and relax. Talk about anything that might be bothering you, if you made any friends here. Alright, I'll think about it. Whatever it is, it'll only get worse if you sweep it under the rug. Remember, detective, anything driven underground thrives, and then it festers. So I hope you do follow my advice. I'm always here if you need me. Talk to me anytime. Aw, that's cool. Right, what do we have next? Detective, I'm gonna talk to you about something. Yes? Officer Butts, Watts, it's his birthday tomorrow. <laughs> I don't care. Happy birthday to him. I thought we could go all, all, all go out and celebrate it. Go ahead. You don't expect me to join, do you? Of course I do. It'll do you so much good. We all need a break, too. Poor Ryan barely gets out much either, since he's had his first child. I've been planning to break him out of his dreadfully boring routine for a while now. What about his family? He'll spend most of the day after work with them, but only take him out later. <laughs> I don't like him. <laughs> he wouldn't even want me there. Of course he would. Don't worry, he'll appreciate the company. So you'll be there, right? Do I even have a choice? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> cool, I'm excited. Well, the way I see it, I'll try to be the bigger person. Looks like that's it for today. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow, Blunt. Good night, Sector. I hope it is. Hey, it's enough. What up, buddy? You know, some of the people here are quite nice. Mike's pretty friendly, for instance, Mrs. Patterson's great too. But the others have been giving me funny looks. I guess they're just a bit paranoid after the incident, and I can't blame them. I heard the victims are outsiders too. I also heard the cops aren't taking the case seriously. A couple of days here and I heard so much, we really seems to travel in Pineview. You know, can't say I disagree with that. Must be useless for you, hearing all sorts of things from everyone. It's quite the opposite. Oh, that's a pity. Anyway, I'll see you later. Okay, see you later enough. I can't go anywhere else, right? Who's this old guy that's just standing there all the time? I swear this guy has been here for all the time now, and I can't talk to him. Oh well, I'm actually curious about uh, talking to him, but... What the fuck is going on? <laughs> Have I started hallucinating already? You guys saw that, right? The flying car. <laughs> Yes, I think Michael has started hallucinating already. Oh well. Oh hey, it's songwriter again. Hey detective, I need your help again. There is a song I'm having trouble with. Because caught in the safety net, meant to break my fall, killed by certainty now that I know it all. Mysteries at those called Dark Knights Lost. Rising Son of Reason. Rising Son of S Intense Exhaust. Hmm. I I'm torn between one and three. Comes at a cost. Maybe one makes a little bit more sense. But like, three weighs a bit more. You know, it's like if you heard that lyric, it would be like, it's more emotional. Rising Sun of Reason comes at a cost. Hmm, at what cost though? Innocence, maybe. Or the sense of awe and wonder. I'll need to rework this a bit, but it's pretty good. Thanks, detective. Glad I could up. So when do I get to hear these? Oh, there's a lot to be done yet. A lot. Not for a month at least, maybe even two. Oh, I may not be here that long. Then you'll just have to come back. And if you want to have a listen, eh? Uh, I guess I will. Back to the hotel. Maybe I should have picked the first one. Time to exhaust. Maybe that would have made more sense. Hey, it's Mrs. Patterson. Let's talk to her again. Hello, Mr. Stone. Sleep well last night? Uh, yeah, but that helps. I told you it would, didn't I? It's, I'm quite busy today. Tomorrow's my husband's birthday. Got a lot of preparations to do for his special day. Well, I'll leave it to it then. Give my best wishes to him. See you around. And stop smoking. Every time he fucking zones, he starts smoking again. 
Dude, I'm trying to make him quit. Come on. <sighs> Do we want a bath? Meh. No? You don't even want to go to the bathroom? You don't even want to turn the lights off. You can't- do you just want to sleep with the clothes- your clothes on? Is that gonna be okay? Yeah! He doesn't care anymore. Good for him! That's the shit- oh, he, he, he's on the phone. Never mind. Uh, be like that. Hi, you reached Abigail and... And, uh, Michael. We're not home right now, so please leave your message, and name your number, and bye. Why would you want to listen to that, man? Is that, doesn't that make it harder? Hey, it's alright. I'm here now. I really am. I'm happy you let me back. Memory, come with me. For good. I shouldn't just leave or give up. You shouldn't? But you know there's nothing there for you anymore, don't you? Think about it. I'll be waiting. You know, if you really cared about me, you, you wouldn't be saying that, ghost. You, you, you'd be like, you should move on. Find happiness in your life. Be happy. Don't come here. Not kill yourself and be with me forever. That's kind of weird. Just, I, I'm just saying, man. If you have a loved one, would you say that to them if you were a ghost? Just, yeah. <sighs> Damn, my back. I feel terrible. Yeah, well, you didn't sleep a whole lot. Anyways, guys, I'm gonna stop here. <laughs> yeah. So, more plot, more twists and turns, huh? You're gonna have to talk to Jack. Let's see what he knows. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one.